This question is solve a trig equation. Now there's one major problem with this and that we have a cosine and a sine function, which is not good. We'd like them all to be cosine or all to be sine. So which one of these should we convert to the other one? You want to use the conversion for sine squared and that's the Pythagorean identity, which is sine squared W plus cos squared W equals one. And I want to solve for sine squared, so I'm going to subtract cos squared. So sine squared is 1 minus cos squared w. So we're going to take that out and replace it with 1 minus cos squared. So I'm going to rewrite just the original. Sine squared w equals negative 2 cos w. And replace sine squared now with 1 minus cos squared w equals negative 2 cos w. So we have one equation, but cosine's appearing twice. What we're looking at is a quadratic, and the way you really should solve quadratics is collect everything on one side and have zero on the other side. Here's our square term. I like my square term to be positive, so I'm going to add cos squared to both sides. So we have cos squared w minus 2 cos w, and I'm going to subtract the 1 as well. So now I have solved for 0. So now we have a quadratic in cosine. I don't like the way we write powers for trig functions. It should be written like this. And I'm just writing the multiply by negative 2 outside of the parentheses. What you're looking at here is basically x squared minus 2x minus 1, where x equals cosine. So how does this factor? So we need to multiply make negative 1, add to make negative 2. So, whew. We can't do minus 1 plus 1. That won't work because that will have no middle term. Hmm. That'll be annoying. Sine squared one minus cos squared negative two. I think this all my algebra looks okay. Usually these are set up to factor nicely. This doesn't seem to be factoring very nicely at all. If this was just plus one, and then they'd both be x minus 1, x minus 1, and that would work. I'm thinking I have a sign error somewhere, a plus minus sign error somewhere. W. No, I think everything looks okay. All right, so how in the world do you solve these? If it doesn't factor nicely, we can complete the square. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I complete the square, it's x minus half of 2. So it's x minus 1 squared minus minus 1 squared. You bring down that plus 1. So I just completed the square right here. So make sure you look up complete the square if you haven't seen that before. And then negative 1 squared is positive 1. So we have a minus 1 plus 1. So both of those are going to cancel, and this just equals x minus 1 squared. Oh, geez, I changed that, and it didn't really, that should be a minus 1, minus 1. Oh, wow. And so now we have a minus 1, minus 1, which is a minus 2. So 0 equals, I'm going to unsubstitute now. So x was cosine w minus 1 squared. So all of everything here turns into that minus 2. Just remember, I'm replacing x with uh, cosine. Aren't dogs great? So add 2 to both sides. All right. 
right, square root both sides. Remember, you get the plus minus square root two equals cos w minus one, add one to both sides. All right, so this is going to have, this is not a value that we uh, normally see for cosine. And there's a plus and there's a minus. So the one plus square root two equals cos w, or one minus square root two equals cos w. All right, there's something wrong with this equation here. What's wrong with it? Well, we have positive one and we're adding square root two. Now you can type square root two in a calculator. It's about 1.4 something. Uh, but the problem is you add those two together and you have a number greater than one and the largest value you get ever, ever get out of cosine is positive one. So that value is too big. So this has no solution. Now the other one can have a solution and in fact does have a solution. So what in the world is one minus square root two? You can definitely use a calculator. Like I said, square root two is close to 1.4 something. Uh, so we have one minus 1.4. So it's gonna be close to negative 0.4, but I'm gonna leave it like this. And we could move the cosine function over as cos inverse. Uh, you'll get one solution out when you enter this in a calculator. We're going to have to use a calculator for this because this is not a side value that I know anything about. There's going to be two solutions, however, and let's think about what those solutions look like. Unit circle, this is an X value. I've uh, drawn better circles than this. Let me put that X axis in a more reasonable spot. All right, this is an X value, and I just said it's about negative 0.4. So it's gonna be somewhere right about here. Not one we're familiar with. So when I type this into a calculator, which of these two angles is it going to give us? You should know the answer to this. Cos inverse, the range is quadrant one and two, not quadrant three and not quadrant four. So the angle we're gonna get from a calculator is gonna be this angle right here, which I'll call theta. So one of them is cos inverse one minus square root two. And of course that's arc cos. So that'll be theta, let me call it theta one. That's the first angle. Now there's a second angle we're gonna get as well, but we're gonna have to work a little bit for that. Uh, I believe you can type in arc cosine uh, one minus square root two on this uh, homework question. Here's our restriction. Angle's got to be between zero and two pi. Okay. So clearly theta one's between zero and two pi. What's wrong with me calling this the other angle? Well, if you go this way, it's negative, which is a problem. I mean, good news is if theta two went this way, it would just be negative of what we got for theta one. However, this problem said angle has to be positive and not more than two pi. So I can draw the positive angle, that's easy to do. How in the world do we get this angle? Is it a little bit tougher? So reference angle is what we wanna think about here. So that's theta bar, the reference angle. That's also theta bar. So if I knew the reference angle, I could add two of those reference angles to theta one. How in the world do we get theta bar? We don't, you can get the decimal for theta, theta one, but I can't write it down explicitly. So that's as good as I can write down theta one without getting out a calculator and approximating it but I can compute theta bar. How do I do that? Well, think about adding theta one and theta bar. What do we get? We get pi. Theta one plus theta bar equals pi. So I can solve for theta bar. Theta bar equals pi 
minus theta 1. And remember I would said theta 2. Theta 2 is theta 1 plus 2 of these reference angle theta bars. Let's go ahead and plug all these in. Theta 1 is cos inverse. You know, before we write down exactly what theta 1 is, let's make that substitution for theta bar. So we have that. Distribute your 2, theta 1 plus 2 pi minus 2 theta 1. Now we have 1 theta 1 minus 2 theta 1s, so it's 2 pi minus theta 1. And that would be 2 pi. Now I'm going to substitute in what theta 1 is, so that right there will bring down minus arc, I always forget there's two c's, arc cos 1 minus square root 2. Alright, so that'll be theta 2. And we got theta 1 written above, I'll just put a box around that, that's theta 2. Theta 1 is right here. Uh, if you have to write them in order, they're drawn uh, nicely, it's theta 1 is a small one, theta 2 is the big one. You may be worried, oh, we're subtracting stuff here, but remember, we're going to full rotation and then subtracting theta 1. And I'll just use green here, so do a full rotation in green and then come back theta 1. And it turns out that backwards angle right there will be negative theta 1. All right, so these are our two angles in the right quadrants for this problem.